So I've had my Marin Nail Trail 29er mountain bike for about three years now, and I think it's past due for review, seeing as I ride it more than any other bike, at least I have for about the past year. And I've been putting out a lot of videos about the bike. So I think I'll just give you an overview of the bike, what I like about it, and how every part has held up and whether I think it's a good part for the past three years. So sit back, relax, and listen, because I'm gonna show you the parts on the bike and play some riding footage while I describe my experience with it for the past three years. So to start, I'm gonna start with the most noticeable feature on a mountain bike for most people, which is the front fork. Uh, this fork is a RockShox Recon fork, and it's got just over 100 millimeters of travel, which has been fine for my riding style in the New England area. It's got a front lockout that I'm showing you here, but that broke at some point and I never bothered fixing it because I just don't use it that much. And you can adjust the amount of air in it with a pump and that's fine with me. Um, you can see here the quick, quick release front skewer broke at some point. I never bothered quick fixing that either. I just use an Allen key to open it. And uh, yeah, otherwise it's been a fine fork. Now, for me, this Marin Nail Trail 29er has been fine riding in New England for the past three years. There's definitely a portion of people that say that New England riding is too chunky for riding a hardtail, and I can see where they're coming from. You definitely have to get out of the saddle a lot, and you have to be very careful about your line choice, and sometimes altogether avoid features, because really you just can't safely do a lot of stuff on a hardtail. But if you're willing to miss a few features, a hardtail is pretty great, and honestly, a low travel hardtail, like you see in this video, is terrific for just riding on the road and doing a decent amount of mileage, or doing something between mountain biking and cyclocross. It's really good. If your style of riding is kind of exploring around and enjoying off-road trails when you find them, um, I think this kind of bike is terrific, and I think the Marinale Trail 29er is a terrific bike for those purposes. As you see here, I'm going over plenty of chunky stuff, including some big rocks, and it doesn't really hold me back one bit. The only thing holding me back is me, not the fork. So on this bike, I'm still running uh, Schwalbe Nobby Nick tires. I think they are. Um, they've been fine for me. They're really grippy, and they're great for cornering, and they're great for pretty loose stuff. As you can see, after about three years, the tread's still doing great. Um, I can't necessarily say the same for my rear tire though, though which had some trouble. Um, so I swapped that Nobby Nick out for a Mountain King by Continental. It's a pretty heavy tire. I originally used it for a tubeless setup, but now I use a tube inside of it ever since the tubeless setup went bad. And it's fine, it's heavy, but it grips well. All in all, I think the setup is pretty good for off-road, but also it's really decent for road riding. I often find myself riding road on my mountain bike just because I like the position and it's more fun if I do decide to take it off-road, and I can definitely hold about 12 miles an hour average with minimal effort. It's really good for all-terrain riding, and um, I haven't gotten a puncture ever since I switched to the Continental Mountain Kings on the back. They're pretty resilient tires. Now, on top of the fork and the tires being pretty reliable, I found the frame to be great. I frequently take this thing off of drops that are one to two feet in height, and I have found it to be great. Additionally, uh, I used to get mad when I first bought this bike, and I would like chuck it into trees, and I'd chuck it off little ledges, and it never broke once. Not a single thing on this frame is broken, which is great for me because I bought this thing from Chain Reaction Cycles, and I came to find out it came without a warranty. So anyways, if you're looking at getting this bike used, uh, I would say this frame is pretty bulletproof. It's made of aluminum, so it's pretty rigid too, so it's pretty decent at climbing. All in all, happy with the frame. The next thing worth noting is the drivetrain. Now on the back, it's got a SRAM NX rear derailleur. It's 11 speeds and it's geared for climbing, I would say. Uh, this derailleur makes it very easy to, on a loose or a chunky climb, keep the wheels spinning slowly or quickly and um, yeah, make your way up a hill without breaking cadence. It's very good for climbing. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I haven't had a single problem with it. After about 600 miles, I tuned it up myself and it was very easy to do that. And additionally, it makes a pretty nice little noise when you're spinning the pedals or when it's freewheeling. Um, I personally really like it and you can hear it here. On the front, this bike has a one by, and I think it's 
just the right size for climbing and also for going pretty fast on the road. And on my old bikes, I had a two by and a three by respectively. And honestly, I just prefer this far more because of the lack of maintenance it requires. It's very nice. Uh, additionally, the pedals are pretty decent. They're basically just knockoff race face chesters. Um, there's nothing special to them, but when you're wearing any type of tennis shoe, they grip your foot very well. And I personally haven't found the need for clipless, even though I ride clipless on all of my road bikes. They also have little reflectors in them. Uh, one of them is popped out on my bike, but you know, that's fine. It's, it's a nice touch. On top of all of this, the seat is actually pretty okay. Uh, I find that for mountain biking, it's about the right softness so that when you inevitably have your butt smash into the seat, it doesn't end up hurting you the next day. You don't get bruised, any of that. Uh, but for longer riding, specifically on roads where you aren't changing your position a lot, it can make your butt hurt a bit. So while I don't necessarily advise against riding on the roads with this, if you're going to be mainly road riding on this mountain bike, I recommend a different saddle. Um, the stuff you're seeing here, it's fine, but if I did this for two hours, my butt would hurt. And honestly, I can do that just fine on my road bike saddle. So I recommend checking out a new saddle if you're getting this bike and it comes with a stock saddle and you think you're largely going to do road riding. And debatably, the most important feature on this bike is the brakes. This bike, despite having a SRAM drivetrain, has Shimano brakes, and I don't really know what type they are, but they work fantastically. Uh, in the three years since I've had them, I've done literally nothing. I haven't changed pads, I haven't changed the fluid, and they've done great. When you turn them upside down, sometimes the fluid moves around and you have to shake it around a bit, but otherwise they still stop me terrifically after like 3,000 miles of braking. Finally, I'm going to go into a bit of the customization I've done. So here you can see this B sole or 8 sole, I'm not really sure, saddlebag that I have on the center stack. Uh, this is a nice big bag to have when you're going on a long ride. Uh, this is just an accessory I recommend. I keep an air pump in it and also I put snacks in it and my wallet and my phone and some other stuff that I just like want to keep off of my body and keep from dangling around. And it secures pretty well when I'm mountain biking or road biking, I don't notice it. On the back, I have this ISV or LSV, I can't really tell, it might even be BV um, saddlebag, just standard saddlebag. And in there, I keep the basic tools, I keep a multi-tool, a tube, um, some tire levers, and also some Gorilla Tape in case I need another tube or um, I have a puncture that I think I can fix or something like that. Um, and I've, of course, I can't close it with one hand, but you know, it's a fine saddlebag. So all in all, I think this Marin Nail Trail 29er has been a terrific entry-level mountain bike for me, and honestly, probably my first real mountain bike. Before this, I had a specialized hard rock, and I also had um, a hybrid with kind of cyclocrossy tires. And this is such a big upgrade, I can't even um, begin to imagine going back to those other bikes. Personally, it's been great to have an entry-level mountain bike. I think it's exactly what I want. Um, I like riding off-road, and I like exploring off the beaten path, but I also like being able to go the distance and a hardtail kind of fits that balance perfectly. Um, it's great for just popping around. It's pretty cheap to get. I ended up buying this thing for like $700 new. Now I know bikes are more expensive now, but even looking for this used now, I doubt it would be above $1,000. Additionally, uh, this bike's been great. I mean, as I said, the frames held up well. The fork, other than the lockout braking, has held up well, and honestly, that doesn't matter to me. And the derailleur even shifts well, and I'm by no means a professional at maintaining this bike. I occasionally lubricate and clean the fork, and I occasionally adjust the shifting, but I'm really not good at those things. However, it's been really easy to maintain and adjust things on and get things working back to normal. So if you're not great with tools, but you know your way around a bike, I would say this bike is great. It's great to work on. It even has some internal cable routing, so it keeps the cables a bit out of the way and you have to kind of manage them a little bit less. It's nice. But all in all, um, this is one of my favorite bikes, if not my absolute favorite out of my whole fleet. I ride it pretty much every day. Whenever I'm gonna commute by bike, I commute on this one. And whenever I wanna go distance and do a little bit of mixed riding on and off road, I choose this over my road bike, even though my road bike's pretty okay off-road, uh, just because I think this thing is more fun. Um, and while it's a hardtail, it can definitely handle drops and some rough riding that, you know, you wouldn't want to do on a CX bike or some stuff that, you know, you might think a hardtail not, might not be able to do. 
So yeah, I can't recommend this bike enough. If you're looking for a new hardtail, or a used hardtail, I guess I should say, uh, go out and buy this one. It's been great. And I'll certainly be looking at the Marin lineup for my next mountain bike, which is probably coming in the next couple of years. Uh, then I will probably buy a dual suspension, but I can't say I've been disappointed with my Marin Nail Trail hardtail. Uh, it's been a great bike for years, and I'm sure it's going to be a great bike for a couple more years to come. Anyways, this has been Bye Bike Boston. Thanks for watching.